Hello everybody and welcome to my Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Race versus Jackamus Wedge. Jackamus is a Twitch streamer who I've become friends with and he is also the blindfolded world record holder in this game. He is the man who figured out how to beat Tyson blindfolded. And he, he discovered this uh, just a few years ago. He's uh, much more knowledgeable about this game than I am as you'll uh, see during the race. Um, so the way this race worked was the first person to beat all the opponents, Tyson being very last, wins. So uh, lots of luck is involved in this race. Um, so it's taken in real time. You don't add up all the times of each opponent. It's taken in real time. You're just racing against each other. So um, the type of luck that's involved is uh, uh, it depends on what count the opponent gets up. I mean, he can either get up on one or he can get up on eight. You know, and some some of them, actually only one of them, one of them gets up on nine. So uh, it, it's there's lots of RNG depending on um, what count they get up on. Um, some opponents uh, will fake out getting up and then fall back down. That wastes time as well. So that could happen to one streamer and not happen to the other. And the one that it doesn't happen to, obviously he'd gain a little bit of time on his opponent. And uh, finally, there's lots of general RNG that goes into each fight. You know, some sometimes a fighter might give a, a better pattern or something. So that could happen with one a streamer and not the other. So whoever gets the better luck uh, can be the winner, not necessarily the person who's more skilled. So it just depends on what kind of luck you get a lot of the time. So uh, without further ado, let's jump on into this race. And we'll start with the very first opponent, Glass Joe. Let me pull up the streams real quickly so I can start them in sync and uh, the way this is going to work is I'm just going to try to sync these videos up as much as possible. You are not going to hear um, the game during this uh, analysis. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the fights as they go so you will not hear the game music and you will not hear our comments throughout the race. You're just going to hear the analysis as we go forward. All right, so here we go. All right, so starting with Glass Joe, as you can see, um, Coach Crab, that's me, is on the left, and Jackamus Wedge is on the right. And the first opponent is Glass Joe, and the fight has started. Now you can see we are both using what is called a buffer strategy right here. You are punching him on the earliest possible frame every single time by holding down the A button, or B button, whichever one you're using, and letting go real quickly and holding it down again so Mac always punches on the earliest frame possible. You do that several times in order to get a 42.00, the fastest time possible. And as you can see right there, uh, Glass Joe on Jackamus's side, he, he did a little fake getting up. He did not do that on my side. So that put me a little bit ahead. There's part of that luck that we were talking about earlier. Now the next opponent is Von Kaiser. Now uh, Jackamus uses a bit uh, more advanced strats in uh, this fight. As you can see, I'm using more safer strategy right here. It's a little bit slower, but not by much. And uh, as I said before, I'm not I'm not as knowledgeable about this game as he is. So so you'll see him use more advanced strategies throughout the fight. Not just this fight alone, but other fights as well. So you can see that my time, I knocked him down the second time at 31, and Jackamus knocked him down the second time at 29. So he's he's getting a little bit ahead of me now. As you can see, Mario said fight for Jackamus first. So Jackamus has taken the lead. I was in the lead earlier after the Glass Joe fight, but now Jackamus has taken that lead back. And there is the uh, end of the Von Kaiser fight. 39 seconds for me, 37 seconds for Jackamus. And now we're moving on to the title bout against Piston Honda. So Piston Honda, the guy who had his name changed in the Wii version of Punch-Out to Piston Hondo, probably to avoid copyright violations with Honda or something. And as you can see, Jackamus is about one second ahead at this point. And we both use pretty much the same strategy right here. And oh, Jackamus, he got a couple of blocks right there, a little bit of a bad pattern, but 
I didn't exactly get the greatest pattern either, but I didn't get any blocks. So a little bit more luck for me on this fight against Piston Honda. You see, I'm already on phase two right here. And there's the knockdown of phase two, Jacamus. You see, he got up on phase one for me. If he gets up on phase one, if you get a star, you can knock him out immediately. Jack Jacamus, he got up on a two count. Therefore, it was uh, tougher for him to knock him down in phase two. And I'm continuing my fight here and knocked him down to 59. Usually a good fight for, with Piston Honda is about 48 seconds. That's usually a good fight. So we were both a little bit slow on this. And as you see, heading into the major circuit, I have a little bit of a lead right here, about a 15 second lead, I would say. That 15 seconds is in real time, not game time. You can calculate exactly how much the time difference is at the end of this bike run right here. As soon as my bike run ends, we can take a look at the timer, that I, the, the recording timer that I'm looking at right now, and see how much time difference there is. We'll take a look real quickly. The bike, uh, bike run is getting ready to end for me. And there's the ending right there. Okay, it ended at 6 minutes and 18 seconds. Let's see where it ends for Jacquemus. Don Flamenco is the next opponent. It's about a 13 second lead. About a 13 second lead for me at this point. And Don Flamenco is a really standard fight. You can use the buffer strategy, dodge, slow dodge, then quick dodge, get the star. And if you get the star, you can knock him down right away. Don't need to hesitate at all. He goes down in 10 seconds. This buffer strat is something really, really simple to perform. Before this buffer strat was discovered, Don Flamingo 2 is really, really difficult because that star is a frame perfect punch. And you just simply dodge his second uppercut and then knock him down and he will not get back up. So a 15 second fight, really, really simple. Especially if you're uh, experienced in it. Once you learn how to do that little buffer, it's very, very simple. And this next opponent, this guy right here, King Hippo, this is the biggest RNG problem in the game. You just never know when he's going to throw the punches when you can actually hit him. And I, this right here is a little bit of a difference maker in the race so far, as you'll see here in just a minute. So what you want to do is you want to hit Hippo when his arm goes above his head and he opens his mouth. And as you can see right here, I've already been able to hit him twice in the mouth, make that three times, and Jacquemus has only hit him once. And there he goes. He's down, and he will not get back up. 48 seconds. That is an excellent King Hippo time. If you get that time, you got some really, really good RNG. And as you can see, Jacquemus over there is not as lucky. He's up to a minute 20. Now he's up to a minute 30, and Hippo is still not cooperating. And finally, he cooperates on that last hit, and he goes down at 141. So Jacquemus has a lot of time to make up here. Now the next fight, Great Tiger, very little RNG in this run, in this in this fight, excuse me. It's a pretty easy strat to execute once you get used to it. You just have to, to punch, dodge, and then hit him in the gut for a star. And you have to do that multiple times. Then you're able to star him down. He'll get up on one both times, and you just hit him with the star. He's always going to get up on one before the first minute. I believe that's the rule. I'm not positive on that. Now, Jackamus is using a little bit of a different strategy. He's actually using a safe strategy on this fight. I actually used the more risky strategy. So I knocked him down. I knocked him out in 48 seconds. Jackamus is going to knock him down in, like, I believe it's 54 seconds. So he went with a little safer strategy on Great Tiger. I thought that was a little interesting when I went back and watched this. I, uh, I thought that he was gonna gonna go for the uh, the sinister strats as we call them, but instead he went with a little bit safer route. Next opponent, Bald Bull, that I am on right now, and oh, Jackamus was 51, not 54. Okay. Now this on Bald Bull is very very simple. The the 17 second knockdown. Something very easy to execute. The only problem is that very last left punch right there. You have to wait till he drops his guard before you throw it. You have to let go of up, let him drop his guard, and then push up again and punch him in the face, and he goes down. So after he gets knocked down in 17 seconds, you want to hit him with really quick uppercuts. Really quick uppercuts when he throws. Sometimes he'll go into rolling jabs like he did just there for me. 
as Jackamus finishes up the 17 second. Oh, Jackamus did not get the 17 second knockdown. A little bit of an error in execution right there as he went down at 25 seconds instead. He did not let go of up for long enough or something. I'm not exactly sure what went wrong there. And uh, Jackamus did do something interesting right there. I've never seen that gut star before that he did right there. That was really interesting. And like I said, he is much more knowledgeable about this game than I am. And uh, rounding out the uh, king, uh, the, not king hippo, rounding out the bald bull fight. He is the guy, with that little animated gif you see right there. Uh, one of my favorite opponents in this game. We actually get to see him twice in this game. Uh, we'll find him, find him again later on in the uh, in the run. And he's a little bit a little bit different later on, a little bit harder. In some ways he's harder, in some ways he's actually a little bit easier as well. Jackamus finishes up the fight. I believe that's it for him at 132. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay. So as you see, I'm still going in with a little bit of a lead into the world circuit. And once again, we'll see exactly how much this lead is as soon as the um, running scene ends. Okay, there's the running scene ended at 11.21 on the uh, timer. Let's see how much of a lead I have exactly. Now on Honda 2, it's a standard buffer strat. Looks like I increased my lead a little bit. You want to do 20 right gut punches, 10 left dodges, 9 left gut punches, and then he'll go down, and that's it. So the lead's about 25 seconds right now for me, in real time. I'm doing my left dodges right now. Now I go to my left gutters again, he'll back up. And then, boom, you punch him in the stomach. If he goes down, he'll back up to start his hurricane rush, or whatever you want to call it. When he starts charging you, if you're able to knock him down with a gutter, he'll stay down. And that's it. And you got him at 1 minute and 99 hundredths. Jackamus is using the same buffer strategy, as you can see. Next opponent, Soto Popinski. And Jackamus has no problem at all finishing off Tyson, or not, no, not Tyson, Honda 2 in round 1. Now, Soto Popinski, there's lots of RNG in this fight. Um, we'll have to see how well he cooperates. And what you want to do is you want to get him down. You hold down block and you get him down low like he's going to throw an uppercut, but then he'll pause. If you're able to hit him with a gutter right there, you can then nail him with an uppercut and he'll go straight down. So you want him to not throw those hooks right there. Don't throw the hooks. Throw uppercut. You want him to come down like he's throwing an uppercut. And Jackamus is getting, doing the same strategy right there, as you can see. Got him down in 21 seconds. I believe I got him down in 23 on my first knockdown. And that's it for me. And I'm not sure what Jackamus is doing right there. He, he threw an uppercut. I'm not sure if he's trying to fix RNG or, or trying to get good RNG or what. That might be a safe strategy that I'm not familiar with. Um, it seems like it wastes time, but uh, maybe it's some kind of I'd, some kind of thing to get good RNG. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, Bald Bull 2. This is one fight that I was really proud of. This fight went really well for me. Normally, I am not very good at timing these gutter punches, as you can see, because they do require some pretty precise timing. Jackamus finishes up Soda Popinski at 1 minute and 18 seconds, so I'm pulling a little bit more ahead as we keep going. And getting him down at 38 seconds on the first phase, that's exactly where you want him. And this is the guy that always gets up on a 9 count. Bald Bull 2 always gets up on a 9 count. No RNG with him as far as when he gets up. Well, actually, there will be a little bit of RNG on him if he fakes getting up. Sometimes he'll fake getting up on 9. I mean, excuse me, on 5. Second knockdown at 107, and Jackamus has him down at 38 seconds as well. I'm pretty sure our fights are nearly identical. I think that he tries a little bit more of an advanced strategy. Now, on this last phase, I did get an extra star. I forgot, I did not need three stars, I only needed two. So I could have finished the fight in about a minute and 30 seconds, but instead I got a 135. So I did waste a little bit of time in that third uh, third phase right there, but it wasn't that big of a difference. Five game seconds is really only like two seconds in real time. 
And the next opponent is Don Flamenco too. This guy has lots of RNG. And this is the fight. Um, this fight can be an equalizer. And Jackamus finishes on, him off at 131. So he caught up with me a little bit right there. Just by a couple of seconds. So I'm using pretty basic strategies right here. Very safe strategies. Jackamus is going to use much more advanced strategies. And it's very impressive. Very impressive uh, what he's able to do against Don Flamenco right here. I, I cannot do these strategies yet. I have uh, practiced them a little bit, but they are very difficult. I'm going to have to do a lot more practice before I can do them in a run. So as you can see, the strategy that he's using, dodge and then time it perfectly to get that lucky star. Not lucky star, but to get that frame perfect star, I should say. The star might not be frame perfect. There might be like a four or five frame window, but it's pretty tight. It's, it's, it's difficult to get. And as you can see, I'm over there. He, he's now going into his taunting uh, motion. He does that at a minute and 30 seconds is when he starts, starts his taunts. So you want to knock him down twice before he goes into his taunts. And Jackamus got some pretty bad luck right here. He got a huge health refill, or Don Flamingo, I should say, got a huge health refill when he got up. That's one thing that cost Jackamus a little bit right here. So once again, that's more bad luck. That's more uh, more of that RNG that we were talking about earlier. So it's not always about, you know, who's got the most skills, who's the most knowledgeable about the game. It can often be about luck as well. So I finished off uh, Dawn 2 at 2.41. Uh, it was really, I had an error right there in Phase 2. I should have gone for a, uh, or Phase 1, I should say. I should have gone for an uppercut, and, and instead I hit him twice with just jabs. And uh, that cost me quite a bit of time right there. Okay, so here is Mr. Sandman. We're both going to be using the same strategy right here. What you want to do right here in this fight at the beginning is hold up. And when he starts his rolling jab, let go of up and dodge, then hit him in the stomach because his guard will still be up. Hitting him in the stomach takes away a lot more health than hitting him in the face. So then after this, we're using a little buffer strategy right there it with punch, dodge, and punch. Punch, dodge, and punch, as you can see. So using that strategy, you get him down. You want to get him down before a minute 29. I believe it's maybe a minute 28, something like that. You want to get him down as early as you can, really. 118 is solid. And Jackham has struggled a little bit with the, uh, the gutters, but he was able to get him down at 126. He's safe. The reason you want to get him down is because the Dreamland Express right here. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I did not dodge that properly, so that cost me lots of time. And we'll see if Jackamus is able to do it. And see, Jackamus got hit the same way I did, nearly nearly the exact same way that I got hit. So we both uh, cost, cost ourselves lots of time doing that right there. And I'm able to get him down at 218 now. He can get up. He can get a very large refill or a moderate refill. You really, there's a 75% chance that he gets the moderate refill. So you've got a pretty good chance right here. And looking at his health refill, I got the moderate health refill. If I got the large health refill, we probably would have been going to round three. Let's see what happens with Jackamus. Jackamus got the moderate refill as well. So since we both got the moderate refill, we should be able to finish off this fight in round one. I'm able to with a time of 254. Let's see if Jackamus, it's going to be really close for Jackamus. It's going to be really, really close. Look at this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he got him down at 259. That was a really, really clutch fight right there. Able to hold on to round one. If you have to go to round two and knock him down three more times, that is a huge waste of time right there. All right. Super Macho Man. Uh, once again, I'm using safer strategies throughout this fight. Jackamus is using the more advanced strats. And he executes them really, really well in this Macho fight. So looking at this fight right here, you can see that I'm going a little, little safer route. Still doing very similar uh, buffer type of dodge uh, to uh, that we did with the Sandman. And as you can see, Jackamus is just completely destroying Macho over there. And I'm already at 43 seconds. Jackamus is only at 32 seconds, and he, are, he already almost has him down. And he does, look at that, we both knocked him down at the same time, basically. So Jackamus has tied me. We are tied right now. This is the second to the last guy in the race, and we are both tied right now. That is how close this race is. 
Look at that. We're basically synced. We're basically synced right now. He threw a little bit more uppercuts or roundhouse clotheslines, whatever you want to call them for me. And Jackamus has pulled ahead. He has him down at 58 seconds. I just knocked Macho down my second time. We've got one more phase to go to right here. And we'll see what's... Oh, I missed that uppercut right there. That was really costly. and That cost me quite a few, quite a few seconds right there. Luckily, I had another one, and I was able to hit him right there. Jackamus takes the lead going into the last fight, going into Tyson. A time of 110 is a pretty solid time on Macho. And I finish up with a time of 152. So we'll see exactly what kind of a lead Jackamus has here going into Mike Tyson, right as the paper fades out. We'll see what time that is on the recording. Paper fades out at 2050. Let's see how much of a lead he has exactly. It's going to be about 10 seconds probably. Yep, the lead is 11 seconds. So Jackamus has an 11 second lead going into Mike Tyson. This is every single punch, every single second punch that you do on Mike Tyson for the first minute and 30 seconds is frame perfect. Every single first punch you have to do against Mike Tyson after a minute 30 seconds has to be frame perfect. Let's see how we execute. A good time to knock him down is under a minute 10. You want to knock him down under a minute 10 for the first phase. If you do that, you have a really good chance of beating him in round one. If not, you're going to have to settle for round two. Jackham has got him down at 116. It is possible. It is possible to still knock him out in round one. But look at this. I was able to come up with a 101. This was one of the best fights I have ever had against Mike Tyson in an actual run. In fact, I would go as far as saying this is the best pace I've ever had in an actual full run going up against Mike Tyson. And as you can see, executing those frame perfect punches where it takes off a huge chunk of health on that second hit, I continue to do that. And now going into phase two with these frame perfect hits, you want to hit him only once, it takes away more damage. You have to wait, you have to delay just a little bit and then hit him and he hits him only once, but it takes away more health. And I have him at 153. Now this way, I know that I've won. I know that I've got him in round one right here because you can just do a safe strategy. If he is under two minutes and four seconds, you can just do this safe strategy right here that I'm doing. Hit him twice over and over again. It is slower, but it is much safer. And I know that I've got him in round one. And unfortunately, Jackamus, as you can see, round one just ended, and I knocked him out at 248, and there it is. There's the victory right there. So that fight, that time of 2 minutes and 48 seconds, is one of my best times I've ever gotten before on Mike Tyson in this game. Not my personal best, but it was close. Not only that, but it was the first time I ever defeated Tyson in round one during an actual full run. So I was really, really pumped after being able to do that. Not only that, to be able to uh, to be able to defeat Jackamus Wedge, a guy who discovered how to beat Mike Tyson blindfolded. You know, I was I was feeling really I was feeling pretty good about myself after this race. It was it was an exciting thing. Of course, like I said before, lots of luck was involved. You know, I got I got really good luck against King Hippo. Without that luck on King Hippo, you know, this race would have been. A lot closer but uh, it really came down to the Tyson fight as we were both really neck and neck going in the Tyson fight and there Jackamus Wedge finishes him off in round two with a time of one minute and five seconds in the second round so that was the race right there it really came down to Mike Tyson and uh, I was really fortunate enough to be able to execute really well on those uh, uh, frame perfect hits and Jackamus I mean he he did he did really well against Tyson. I've seen him beat him. I've seen him beat Tyson many times before in round one, but he just wasn't quite able to do it in this race. So we raced again later, and he did beat me. He did end up beating me uh, the the next time that we raced. But uh, it was uh, it was a really fun race, and it was really exciting. It was so close, and uh, I, I felt like that this was a really good thing to uh, to highlight and put on YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoyed the race. Um, Jackamus and I both really enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. So uh, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, this was uh, Coach Crab127 facing off against Jackamus Wedge in Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you uh, next time. If you want to, uh, if you want to follow uh, either me 
or Jacquemus in uh, on Twitch, you can do that. Uh, my my Twitch name is exactly the same as uh, Coach Crab127. And uh, Jacquemus Wedge, that is his uh, Twitch name right there as well. So you can follow either one of us at uh, twitch.tv. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we hope to see you uh, when we're live streaming sometime. So uh, um, until next time, we'll, uh, this is Coach Crab 127 signing off.